You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Welcome back to Feeding Off Each Other, the weekly podcast where we... What is it again? It's too early in the morning, guys. It's 9 o'clock. Oh, is it? Oh, well, I'm on Don't 6 a.m. home new. time. The no. weekly podcast where we feed <laughs> off the talent, humor, knowledge, and awesome stories of our guests and each other. I'm Matt Sleepy Dennison, joined as always by Dave Brighton Early Wiggins to my left. I'm still a sandwich today, by the way. I'm loving it. We should be a sandwich all the time, guys. Uh, Join as always to my left by Jason. Uh, oh, I should have said bright and early for you, Jason, bright and early. Mm. Wigan, and, uh, or <laughs> Lucas, what's your name? It's, it's early guys. Great success. I should have said, David, there's a tornado in my bedroom. Wiggins. Mm-hmm. Did you, I heard the tornado you're talking about. You heard it. Yeah. In That's, your, in your room. Yeah. It's the air, like the AC. Yeah. I didn't find it that bothersome though. I feel like mine might be louder. It's Yeah. Liar! I, I knew that. I, yeah. Oh, it's different in my room. It's different. <laughs> No, the I, acoustics are different. I actually find it kind of soothing because I like white noise. I don't know. It was it was more of like um like a navy blue noise to me. I don't know. It was <laughs> yesterday you informed <laughs> Seth that there was the tornado sound. <laughs> yeah. How'd that go? He took it literally. He's like, Yeah, there's not that many tornadoes in North Carolina. <laughs> and I, I was trying to specify it was the sound coming from the vent in my bedroom. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of soothing, but I have three fans on now in my room. I have the heater, mm. I have the overhead fan, and then I have the AC. So there's a perfect uh, mixture of cool and warm air. The electrical bill is just going to be so good. <laughs> Sorry, Seth. I turned on the fan, the overhead fan, and I, I got it up to a pretty high speed, and it, it, it made me nervous. Yeah, it's like there was a, Jeez. there was like a one percent wobble to it, and I was yeah. like, I don't trust that to not <laughs> decapitate me. Right now, we have our biggest fan in the room. It's on the ceiling. I think this one's larger than any else, and it's off. It's you true. think? And it's off. And the and the second biggest fan is to our left. Should we introduce him? Yeah, yes. I think so, okay, who's gonna do it? Did me. we decide this? Yeah, okay, we, did. We did. Today? But we actually wrote this one this time. Yeah, we wrote it. We yes. had a, we had a we had a good sleep. We had time Whoa. last night. What? Wait, did we specify where we are? Because last time we didn't do it in the intro. No, we are here once again in the ranger station in Brevard, North Carolina, in the vacation home of Seth Bike Hacks, Seth Alpo himself. Uh, three bedrooms, uh, mm-hmm. beautiful. We're in the forest. Um, what else can we say about this place? It's you, got made for mountain bikers. It's made for mountain bikers. There's a mountain bike shop, full on shop in the basement. Yep. There's an Atari <laughs> machine, which we got into last mm-hmm. night. That was fun. I got killed. Uh, there's a GameCube and it's like hacked or something. There's uh, we well, haven't really, we got to get into that tonight. That's new, is it? Ooh. Yeah, that's new. That's nice. Well, You've been here before. Oh yeah. Okay. I've stayed here before the renovation. Oh. And and after. Ooh. Yeah. Much uh, much nicer now. So yeah, if you want to visit North Carolina, ch- Google the Ranger Station. Yeah. It's what on Airbnb it? right now. Yeah. Airbnb. Nope. Yeah, very nice spot. Um, mm-hmm. Great way to check out the area. And uh, maybe you'll get to hear the infamous gong neighbor who we spoke about on the last pod with Bobo. And oh. the bedroom tornado. <laughs> and the bedroom tornado. <laughs> so much to listen to here. Maybe bedroom. we'll even be here doing a pod still. Possible. All right. Today's guest has been making a living producing mountain bike content around the world for over eight years now. In that time, he has created hundreds of videos documenting his experience on two wheels, spreading the stoke wherever he goes. And today, he's here to sprinkle some stoke with us. Gentle Chuthers, <laughs> please welcome the flow feaster, the trail taster, the loam luncher, the gnarly nibbler, a.k.a. the single track sampler himself, Alex Bowers. That is it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> welcome Thank to the <laughs> bottom. That was quite the intro. Jason wrote it. Yeah, I did write that. There's some other good names there for you that maybe you could adopt if you open like another channel. Second Narrow channel, Track Nibbler is another one. Dan's Na- like <laughs> Narrow Track Nibbler. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably heard it all at this point. Yeah. Oh, it's good to see you, man. It's been a while. Uh, we last met, what we were saying, five years ago, Whistler Bike Park. Man, I think it's longer. His, In passing. I think his, was it 27? It might have been 2017, dude. Oof. What? Yeah. It might have been that long ago. I, I think it was. Like when I went to Whistler, it was either it was 2017 or 2018. Shit, maybe it was a really long time ago. We, we yeah, we I reposted the photo of you in Whistler yesterday. I was trying to find a good photo of your face, and I oh, scrolled yeah, pretty yeah, yeah. pretty I far. That. I saw that. Yeah, that was Whistler. I wonder what the date was on that. I'm not a huge fan of posting photos of myself. Why not? What? I don't know. 
with you're a face YouTuber. like that and a hair and hair hey. like that? Yeah. Come on. What do you mean? You always uh, you got. Well, I guess you're doing POV a lot of the time mm-hmm. for your content, but you got to yep. talk to the camera so much. I know. It can be hard sometimes. Yeah, it can be hard <laughs> to pull up that camera and, and talk to it for sure, especially so, if you're by yourself in in public. Yes. You posted this photo 252 weeks ago. Ugh. So it was five, five years ago. <laughs> Somebody do the math. Five, five, years. five years. That's five years ago. Okay, I was right first time. It was yeah. actually a quite epic first time meeting because we both hit dirt merchant for the first time at our first time meeting oh we were both working on the step down step up the big 40 foot step up whatever you say it is yeah you and i were both you hadn't done it and that was the first day that i had cleared it seth and i had been working on it for days oh yeah yeah, yeah. and then we just happened to run into you and kaz just out of nowhere oh okay i thought you were like you i haven't hit it and you're you were just like i think i'm Hell yeah, dude. Really? <laughs> oh, oh, no, it God, was my, sick. It was I'm, an awesome day. My memory is terrible. I thought we met at the bottom no. near the corral, like the lineup. The Maybe we saw bar. each other again. Yeah, the Longhorn <laughs> bar. I think that was after. I think first time was out on the trail. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And you guys never met, Jay? Nope. 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 Well, we just met, yeah. Right now. Here we are. Here we are. I have this seen, I have watched you guys for many, many, many years. But go yeah. on. Go on. Yep. Okay. Name every video. <laughs> I've seen. Back to Diablo days. Oh, oh my wow. God. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. That far? Yeah, that's, how, that's, that's, like, a, that's how I knew that's that we bef- would get along. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. That's before even like anything really bike related. I mean, a little bit, but. A little yeah. bit, yeah, yeah. That was just, uh, you were on Reddit? How did you come across that? <laughs> YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah shit. I guess we were all over YouTube. Yeah. That was when like having a viral video actually meant you were going to be on the front page of YouTube for a bit. Yeah. Maybe Reddit too, actually. Maybe Reddit oh. might have been the first. I'm not sure. Mm. What was the song where you're dancing around? You're like in the classroom. No. Oh, the music uh, video. Your face, I like that yes, shit. That. <laughs> <laughs> People don't forget. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. We're yeah. at yeah, University of British Columbia uh, in, a, uh, in the Sauter Business School in a, like a, in a classroom mm-hmm. without permission. That no just permission. yeah, just making it up, no shot list, just one shot at a time. No, you did not. We had a friend who was not a filmmaker at all, pressing record for us, and Chase mm-hmm. and I were just dancing wow. around. Wow, mm-hmm. <laughs> did was that like a friend of yours that you were just like, hey, we we need a girl for this video we're shooting? Did you tell her anything? <laughs> She's a friend. Or you just like, <laughs> you just like uh, got in her face and started. Yeah, did yeah. we ever find out who who she was? No, I don't know. That's uh, Jason's fiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did she ever talk about that video? Like, like, did she ever like get recognized or anything? Any? Yeah, she she's been recognized for it for sure. Uh, um, not is, recent. She's wearing glasses though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's an old one. Is she also the Diablo girl? No. no. Okay. It's a different girl. No, gotcha. that's Bridget. Yeah. I've seen her in a while. No, oh, she is. She's Anyways, that, yeah, that's that's funny that you were watching that long ago. I mean, we've been watching you for a while too. Yeah, for you're sure. you're like one of the OG mountain bike YouTubers. First wave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a pandemic um yeah i was it, writing the intro i was like ah should i put like one of the og mountain bike like i know you are but i also don't want to you know make you feel old or like <laughs> oh i'm old yeah but I feel how like- old are you <laughs> you know i got this wrong the other day <laughs> i was talking to my mom like i'm 36 she's like actually you're 37 <laughs> <laughs> I guess stop keeping track. That's not old. I don't really pay attention. Wait, wasn't Bobo older? Yes. 40? I think he said 42. 42, yeah. Wow, I didn't know Bobo was that old. Yeah, he's yeah. basically Young retired. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a dad, so. He parties sense. like yeah. a 16 year old, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Like, if, it, if you talk about it in terms of that, he's way younger than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So His liver is uh, 78, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're, uh, you've been on for a long time. You're, you know, talk a little bit about those, like, OG days. Like, how, what inspired you to get on YouTube and do your thing? Okay, you want to hear something crazy? No. I've always wanted to tell the story on a, like, in a video, but I never have. Oh. The, We're getting the scoop. Yeah. So, it was such an insane coincidence, me getting, like, starting to post videos um, I was already into YouTube and whatever, but I was just super broke, super fucking broke, living uh, out of my car. And I. How much was in your bank account? So I had two years in a, uh, my bank account, man, like under $300 for sure. 
Like I had two years. I was purposefully making as little money. I was working as little as I could to get by. So the solution was, is I also wanted to work as little as I could. So the solution was to just lower my expenses as far as I could. I got really low. My budget for like meals was like $3 a meal. Yeah. Like there was a point in time where getting a foot long sub at Subway was like the splurge, which is crazy. I understand. Like lunch would be, I would always have a stack of 50 like tortilla, like corn tortillas. And lunch would be like getting an avocado and tomato and just cutting it up, putting it in there with some salt and pepper and hot sauce. But yeah, so I was doing that. I had two years. I made $7,000 one year. And this is on purpose. I was teaching. I was tutoring. Like I had a gig. I could have been working and, you know, doing full time. And I had previously when living in Atlanta, but I was doing them on the road and just doing as little as I could, like enough for gas. And then to keep to repair my bike every now and then. But yeah, I made $7,000 in like 2015 and then $17,000 total, like for the whole year, 2016. So anyway, the, the coincidence was that like the year before I had entered in one of those pink bike, uh, advent contests mm. and I won it. What's that? Like, the what? Yeah. Uh, so Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. The Christmas, yeah. like every day of Christmas, you, you like click a couple of buttons on pink bike and you get entered to win one of the, a prize. Like each day is a different prize. The one that I won was a gimbal. Oh, oh my the life changing gimbal. Wow. I had no idea what it was. I just, knew, I just knew it was really expensive. So it just sat in my car. It, it was sat in the box in my car. It was a glide gear gimbal, one of the ones that you wear on your chest. And this was before I had even seen the Nate, a Nate Hills video, like before he had posted his first like Vulcan hangover. Friday. It was a hangover video, his very first one. And um, yeah, so where did I get the ring? Sort of other calendar sweepstakes. <laughs> so, like that. But yeah, I mean, I had no money because so this, this gimbal was like $300 piece of equipment. So I'm a broke mountain biker. The plan was to sell it, mm -hmm. you know. So it sat in my car unused in the box. And then um, I just, I saw that video. I was like, how the hell did you do this? And then I actually looked into what this thing is that I won from Pink Bike. And um, I busted it out one day and I used it in Fruta on the PBR trail, really famous trail in Fruta, uh, Colorado. And I was like, holy cow. Like I looked at it, I looked at the video, and I was like, this is amazing. So I posted it. And I guess before that, so before all this, I, I had the idea to do mountain bike videos. And it was just, this was like the execution, but I had worked at a, at a job previously. I had worked at like a mountain bike getaway in North Georgia. And I had this, I had the idea to do this. I was like, because I came from Florida where there are no trails and I, I got into mountain biking and there was no mountain bikers. I knew no other mountain bikers. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Why is no one else doing this? Like, you know, I'm just, I'm one of one in my circle of people, you know? So it wasn't until I left that I just knew that other people needed to know or didn't know that there was this really rad thing called mountain biking and that there were trails. So I worked at this mountain bike getaway and I was just doing kind of like standard work, you know, greeting guests, getting them checked in, doing maintenance around the property. I was taking people out on guided rides and whatever. And I had this idea. I was like, man. You know, it would be awesome. It'd be so cool if people could preview these trails before they got here. So, so it's like marketing. Like people would see these rides. These trails are awesome. And they'd be like, yo, we got to go there and ride those. So I'm going to take, they had a GoPro. I didn't have one. I'd be like, I'm going to take this GoPro. I'm going to go out and ride and film and talk about the trails as I ride them. And they were like, nah, we just want you behind the desk, actually. Don't worry. That's not. This is useless. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. We don't want that. So I did that on my free time and that was where the first videos I ever posted and, but it was without a gimbal. So it was eventually those videos that Brian BKXC saw and that with the just happenstance of coming into that gimbal from pink bike and Brian reached out to me and then um, next thing I knew I was 
I was in Salada, Colorado. I went and met up with him and Seth in Moab, and then the rest is history. But it was like so many random things that happened before to make it actually possible. That's crazy. Yeah. You guys became like the Avengers of mountain bike YouTuber. You guys had this like <laughs> group that was, you know, you, you guys are so killing it. We became instant friends. Yeah. Like yeah. actually, you know, very much real life friends, not just on videos. We just worked together. Yeah. We just all got along fantastically. Maybe it was because we also all went to Moab for the first time together. That's pretty cool. And we were all new ish to mountain biking in the West. You know, Seth and I were, were living in Florida at the time. You know, Seth had ridden pretty much only in Florida. I had ridden, I had been riding in Colorado, but that was my first year. I, I had just gotten a job in Colorado I, at a bike shop because I was broke. And I was basically marooned until I got money. So I stopped and figured Colorado was a good enough place to stop. And, uh, but yeah, so riding Moab was super mind blowing and epic. And we all experienced it together and that was totally bonding. Do you remember the first video you saw of single track sampler? Mine Ooh. might have been the Florida road trip to the, uh, was oh, it no. the Keys or what's yeah. it called? Oh, Florida with Seth, oh, the God. bike hacking trip. Yeah, that was, was miserable. <laughs> that was super entertaining, though. That I, it was pretty inspiring for us. I don't know if we had done our bike packing video by I don't at that point. Think so? I don't think so. That one went awry, though. Yeah, like, in every way possible. Yeah, in like, <laughs> every way. Yeah, you're like you're like biking on a high on the highway and sketchy. That was the stupidest thing we've ever done together, ever. Like <laughs> hands down, we rode across like an eight lane highway. Like, what the fuck were we thinking? <laughs> I mean, made good content. Also, I followed <laughs> Seth and just accepted what he what his path was. And now that I know him, that was foolish. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, we were speaking to Bobo, uh -huh. and he was expressing his disdain for Florida. He hates Florida. Me too. You hate Florida. <laughs> yeah, I very much. Have like you done Florida. the Florida Man Challenge? What's your birthday? February. You do. You, you, you type in Florida Man. Well, February. What is it? February five. Five. Uh, you type in Florida man followed by your birthday and then you hit the first article and this, this, the, the title is supposed to represent you as a person. Mm. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, police, Florida man covered in blood during traffic stop confesses to killing father in Boca Raton. Wait, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Oh man, this is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're always terrible. But oh, wow. you, you'll always find an article. That looks like oh, the yeah. lead singer from like Mariana's Trench or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. He's got yeah. the like emo hair. His name's swoop. Jared Neumann. You know that guy? <laughs> Wait, how's that Google shirt? search working you typed my name or no we just had in florida man <laughs> okay. followed by your birthday okay I got yesterday you. I got you. bobo's was uh like florida man climbs to the top of a playground and tells kids where babies come from <laughs> and the yeah. guy had full full face tats oh yeah. my god yeah. <laughs> like uh, that was terrible man Fun you, you guys watch channel five yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so like a lot of those you guys remember the this the joker guy I don't Vaguely, know. go the, ahead. Yeah. The face tat, crazy face tats, and like wildly delusional. I mean, it's describing a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's yeah, the, yeah. He, he, that's from the city that I grew up in. Oh, like, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, so no what plans you, to go back, eh? Uh, well, <laughs> unfortunately, my family refuses to move. Uh. <laughs> I keep trying to tell them the mountains are better, but they don't listen. Jason's got family. I do have. I'm sorry. Retired. <laughs> older family in florida yeah yeah which i do visit and i do too it, i i think florida is the most it's like the most beautiful place i think like it's the, pretty i think it's pretty oh. the the edges you know the beaches <laughs> the middle's kind of uh, the crust yeah the crust is good <laughs> i think the swamps are more interesting than the i'm not a huge beach guy oh uh, okay okay not a not a huge beach guy I feel like so. you're a mountain guy I'm a mountain guy yeah florida also i mean how i don't understand how anyone can argue for a beach over a mountain lake like how mm. is a beach ever better than a mountain lake i don't get it fair, fair. different uh like sea life you know there's more going on yeah more things more to look at on the ground the ocean. <laughs> i guess so i mean it's, you know people love shells and you know just picking up rocks seeing what's underneath and or the yeah. heat people like the heat people like the waves Skim, That's true. Skimboarding. Yeah, so I grew up on the on the Gulf side, right? So it's skimboarding. There's no surfing at mm -hmm. all. So 
I do like surfing. If if I grew up in, you know, on the West Coast, I'd probably have been really into surfing and really loved the beach for that reason. Did skimboard when I was really young, but you know. It's also very weather dependent. Like very. Yeah. Even more than mountain biking, so Howdy dude, each other nation. You love the show, you love the pod, you love the boys. Well, why don't you support us by purchasing some of our merch on MahaloMyDude.com. That's right, Matthew. We've got the finest selection of t-shirts, stickers, and hats you've ever seen. Plus, we even have feeding off each other sticker packs so that you can proudly show off your love for the show on a mug, laptop, your dog, your mom, whatever. And as a special gift to you, our beloved Chothers, we're offering 10% off your next order with the code FEEDING. That's right, head to MahaloMyDude.com and use code FEEDING for 10% off your next order. And now, back Back to to the the pod. I wanted to ask about your Peru trip, because that was kind of the latest big thing on your channel. It looked amazing, but... I always see um, people go to these more exotic like South America or like Southeast Asia and ride the trails. How were the actual trails or was it just the overall experience that people should go for? So actually, there is a really solid mountain bike community in Cusco. We were in, we flew to Lima and then hopped up to Cusco, which is 11,000 feet, like the city. Did you guys know that? Too high. It's so high. We're sea level. They are amazing. <laughs> Um, bre- is, is it uh yeah the air thin is it oh yeah feel a difference oh yeah like to go to machu picchu you go down significantly oh, from wow. cusco which is wild everyone thinks machu picchu is like you know in the sky what, what's different at that hot altitude like you wake up do you are you short of breath or you wake up in the middle of the night your first couple of times are are rough yeah but hmm. most of most of our rides were shuttle so Did you take uh, altitude. altitude pills I did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, what does that do? I don't know. I was in the plane. <laughs> it's actually ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> My friends and I were in the plane and we were uh, like, we all had gotten the altitude pills and I had pulled one out and I took one and then we started talking about it. And then the guy right next to me goes, man, those things messed me up so bad. I wish I had just not taken them and dealt with the altitude sickness. <laughs> really? <laughs> damn why didn't you tell me that like four minutes ago <laughs> i just taken it oh but yeah, yeah no they worked for me they worked yeah i didn't because because i've had altitude sickness going to colorado and like driving straight to colorado from florida and immediately just going up to twelve thousand feet and riding and yeah i i felt i felt pretty bad for like four days after that generally i can get away with just you know first night in the altitude is going to be like i'll have a headache i'll have a migraine won't sleep great but um yeah no altitude pills help quite a bit we've done some googling fellas do you want me to read it go ahead it says that the uh, altitude medication is a diuretic that treats swelling caused by heart disease and it works by helping your body make more pee so you lose salt and excess water from your body diarrhea (laughs) acetazolamide and i'm confused that they're using the word pee on a medical website instead of urine (laughs) it's like pee pee poo poo (laughs) what were you were you peeing were you peeing more than uh, normal i don't i can't say i thought about it but Mm. none of what you described just sounded like it would help no i don't know it's very confusing (laughs) it sounds like it dehydrates you (laughs) yeah (laughs) that sounds it sounds like the opposite of what you want personally yeah Dave, are you on like oh. Ask Jeeves or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at, yeah, Ask Peeves. <laughs> <laughs> How? Uh, but the trails were great. Trails were great. Yeah, actually, there there is an, a, a really solid mountain bike community in Cusco. So there's there's and also there's like no um, land restriction. There's there's no one anywhere in the area that's going to tell you what you can or cannot do on any land outside of town so there's just people if people go build it 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 exists and you can ride it so because there's people that are interested in mountain biking there's a bunch of trails like quite a bit of trails that just dump straight into town and as the mountain bike scene has grown i'm assuming they've gotten better because there's actual you know there's there's jump trails Hmm. it's not just single track there's amazing single track 
but there's also you know there's there's trails that seem like specific trails for guys to go right after work or before work yeah and they're fun so i was pretty impressed so you'd actually recommend it oh my god yes yeah and yeah no everything about everything about it is amazing because so you don't have to rent a car it's super affordable to just rent a driver for any day so you just get shuttled nonstop and and there's plenty of vans that have just the bike racks and they're ready to do this and um the laps are like super easy you can do kind of like the half lap where you're going up getting like a 1500 vert downhill or you can just go an hour from town and you get like like 3500 or 4000 feet of vert in a run and dump straight back to town just to end at your hotel it's insane Jeez. Yeah, it's so sick. And in the ride and it's like the views are insane. The alpine riding, the above tree line riding is like so sick. It's there's some really awesome steeps. There's really good rocks. Like yeah, it's it's really fun. Speaking of dump, how was the food? <laughs> <laughs> the food was really good. I got pretty sick. I knew it. <laughs> but it was not from the food. Oh. I don't know why every time I go to take a shower, I just I can't. I was like, like, first thing I do is to open my mouth. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I just, I just did that in the shower. <laughs> Since we're in North Carolina, I was still concerned. Yeah, no, yeah, that was. So I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Uh, and yeah, that's a big no-no there. So but are you swallowing are you, are you, the shower? Are you water? chugging no, no, shower no, water? No, I just, I, I just, <laughs> just open my mouth. I think you should be safe if you're not actively ingesting it. Though, I mean, no? no, I think that I even if you're not just gulping it, it's like eventually you're swallowing and you're not thinking. You know, bacteria be small. You know, Yo. I got worse. Well, there's also a, you know, <laughs> what is it, viral load or dosage? What? <laughs> yeah. That sounds very technical. Is this on your Are you website? looking at Ask Jeeves again? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but yeah, the, but that didn't take you out for too long. The sickness. I mean, you just deal with it. You just deal I don't know what it. that means. You just, I, I, you're wear a diaper. You're way out there. And I had a hip pack and I just kept toilet paper and wet wipes in there. And I would just go off on the side of the mountain somewhere, you know, like a few times that day. But it was fine. It was whatever. It really wasn't like I didn't feel terrible. And that was what I, that was what, you know, that's what would mess me up most. Cause, you know, you're doing, we're riding from like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. like out there all day. So if I felt like garbage, it would be rough. But you know, I just got shit a lot. It's like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, honestly, not that bad. Nice. Yeah, and I was not the only one. Oh, got sick. Yeah. Oh god, the poor Peruvian hillside just littered. <laughs> did you eat any guinea pig? I did. Cooey, they call it. Ooh. Very popular dish. Ooh. Quite good. Tastes like buttered chicken. Ooh. Butter chicken. Butter chicken. Mm. Yeah. Was there like curry in it? Uh no. We went to this place that it was kind of, they had this this whole like um show about it. It was very showy. You order it's this place was like was called Cooey Jr. or something. And it's it's not just a gag dish. There it is very popular to eat guinea pigs and it was funny because we had just gone to this this like uh petting zoo essentially and there, were, there was a ton of guinea pigs and they were adorable like that day and then that night we went to this place so you order it and then they bring out they brought out this they brought out this like pre-fashioned cooked guinea pig that they have all dressed up they just have this thing on a platter just ready as a joke and he's like all dressed up and he's got a hat on and like <laughs> scarf and stuff and they have a name his name was wally and they bring him out and they put him on the table for people to take pictures of and then they like take him away and bring him back oh out, my like, god already carved up do they still yeah. have the hat on no they took the hat away <laughs> well why do they have to humanize it before they i don't know <laughs> i don't know this I... was the restaurant like in the main square of cusco so i'm assuming it's you know tourists galore go there so they I think they do it for us. How, how many people does a guinea pig feed? Yeah. Like one? It is small. Yeah, yeah. How many guinea pigs do you need for a meal? It was, really an, it was an appetizer. Okay. We did not eat. Like that was not the main dish. Wow. What was the main dish? What did I eat? I a cow I, just wheeled I, out. I, into I, the, I, with a hat. 
I think I Umbreo. ate like trout that night. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a little too Funny normal. enough, so I got sick the next day, but it, I, <laughs> oh, it, was, not, it was not from the <laughs> guinea pig. I don't think it was from the kids. Everyone ate the guinea pig. Everyone had at least the bite. Okay. Yeah. Boy, am I hungry. Yeah. I'm you think starving. they have that at the Ingles in town? Oh. Guinea pig? You could ask. I, mean, I, I know they don't have lemongrass. I asked if I asked at the Ingles uh, if they had lemongrass because I wanted to make the boys lemongrass chicken. And mm. uh, the, the cashier said I should try either tractor supply or Rona. Tractor. <laughs> she thought I just, like a hardware store. She thought she I just thought wanted you, grass. Yeah. She, like grass seed. <laughs> I was trying to plant my lawn. Well, yeah, yeah. You got to go to like Whole Foods. Yeah. Is there Whole Foods in town? Yeah. Asheville? Fresh Market. Whole uh, Foods. Yeah. Oh, man. Not down the- here. So you're like way south of town. There's, I know. There's, yeah. not, there's, there's tractor supply down here in Ingles. Yeah. Yeah. That way. And Lowe's. We're going to make it to Asheville? We got to do, an, we you do a road trip. Mm-hmm. It, it's very different <laughs> yeah. than down here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You guys are in, you guys are like on the outskirts of Brevard. Brevard's very, very different than. Asheville. We're starting to pick up on that, I think. Yeah. Bobo said the partying was great in Asheville. He said it was better than Austin. Oh yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's talking about. I find that hard to believe. I mean, he was he was banging that drum. He says he's partied everywhere too. (laughs) Yeah, he he He, uh... he has definitely partied a lot more than I have. I'm not gonna lie. This much I know. Yeah, he was. I think all those combined. Yeah. It's now on our bucket list to party with Bobo. I mean, there's a video where uh, Paul the punter they partied. Oh, yeah. They went out partying together in Whistler, and I don't know. Go if ahead. Paul wants yeah, you to know, do he, that he already yeah, Bobo yeah, he already got that. into it a little bit. Yeah. All I know is from the video, it just didn't look like Bobo was going to do that again. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I gotta did, find this at least video. Not if they got a ride the next day. Bobo said on the pod that uh, yeah, you went out with Paul, and then that was the reason Paul decided to quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he's like, people think they can keep up with me, but they can't keep up with me. <laughs> oh, dude, I can't keep up. No. I'm a lightweight. I, oh. bar- I barely drink. Really? Dude, I can't. I feel like you're always like cracking a beer post ride. and Yeah, so, I, 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 one, I, so I wasn't, I didn't drink much. First of all, it just comes back. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Everything comes back to money when I was living in the car. But then I started like the channel and, and. You know, it became like a really popular thing for, you know, when people, when I'd meet people on the road or whatever, you know, like buy a beer, you know, that's a really like a kind thing to do, you know, and I do like beer, but yeah, so I, I didn't drink much beer and then I started doing a bunch of live streams and it became like the thing. It's just like, if, if you don't have these mics in your hand, it's good to have something in your hands and, you know, might as well be a beer. So I started drinking beers on live streams. That was hands down the most I've, I, I drank in like years. So, and I was doing these consistently. But so I'd be having like multiple, depends on how long the live stream would go. Sometimes the live stream would go for a while. And sometimes a subscriber would like send me, I had some subscribers every now and then that would send me like boxes of beer. So I have like a shit ton of beer. Where the hell are our beer subscribers? Yeah, I, I have some pretty awesome people in the community. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Man, some of those some of those beer boxes were amazing. Like from <laughs> all over the place, man. Yeah. How do uh, they get to you? You're in the van. Um, well, some were hand delivered. Oh, okay. Some would come like when I was staying with someone, you know, I'd give them an address when I had it. That's always been that was like always the hardest thing about living in the vans. Where does anyone send you anything? I guess it could be a good thing. But, yeah, how'd you receive the gimbal? Man. I think I, I think probably like most of my mail, I had it just sent to my mom's house. And when I went home for the holidays, I got it. Yeah. Mm. It, so we never got into the live stream thing, but you guys have done a ton of it. I say you guys as the mountain bike Avengers. Yeah. yeah which yeah, I yeah, see we did. you guys as a group. Wait, which Avenger well, is Alex? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I was going to ask you guys, what sandwich would you be when you're talking about being the sandwich in the couch? I don't know, but there's definitely, <laughs> definitely mustard in the middle of the sandwich. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, wait a second. Guinea pig sandwich? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the live stream thing. We never got into the live streams, but uh, like, how how do you like that? Like, there's a vulnerability to just. It is. It's hard, man. It's like high energy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
and there's oh, it's like man it, the setup you never get it i have yet to start a live stream and have everything go right <laughs> right it's such a pain and and then man this one time i remember we cocked it up like royally what did we do we did like <laughs> we were doing a live stream from my van in when we were building it seth and i at his old place at, at berm creek and i forget what we did but the result was that people could join in on the live stream oh god without me without either of us like accepting it and without them knowing <laughs> so they would like they thought they were just like joining to watch the live stream <laughs> but it turned out that they were like getting into the live stream with us like it turned their webcam on yes oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's like chat roulette so, or, yeah it was yeah. so oh, bad was hot. <laughs> i don't remember how this happened but we had like we were running this live stream and people were just joining and they'd be like their face and they're like so confused what the heck <laughs> yeah any bad scenarios there anybody uh you know no just not wearing pants just lots of cameras coming on and immediately turning oh off. yeah and then some people got on and they were like oh hey Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> and people are donating to you, right? Live. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that must be pretty crazy having less than $300 in your bank account to just turning on your oh, webcam and now people are sending you money. It was crazy. I mean, live streams, those live streams early on uh, were like live streams and Patreon were the only way I ever made like this whole thing happen, you know, because it's not like we were getting crazy or not like I was getting crazy views. I just had a really tight knit community. And, and yeah, the live streams were like nuts. The live streams are basically how the van got built or bought. Mm. And actually it is. It's how the van got bought. Wow. So yeah, it is, it is wild. I had some wildly generous people following me, the, the travels and the channel and just willing to contribute to keeping it alive. And if, it, and it, and if they didn't, it wouldn't have, it, it, like, it actually came down to that. So it's pretty, it pretty cool to have the, such amazing support. And yeah, they, it got out of control. It got crazy at sometimes. And I definitely, it was, you'd, because, you know, when you only have $300 in the bank, so there were some nights where people were donating like $100 at a time. And, and to me, I'm like, it's, that seems so ridiculous. I, how do you show grat enough gratitude for that? Right, you know? yeah. You feel like guilty getting that money? A little bit, yeah. yeah. But everyone, they, everyone seemed genuinely stoked and willing and and happy and i know you know 100 bucks for me at the time is not the same as 100 bucks for everyone so uh yeah those those were wild times and how's patreon going we checked it out yesterday and uh i mean it's publicly you could anybody can see that you have that was 600 patrons or something you're getting 750 per patron you make it like six grand a month off patreon no i wish oh what (laughs) <laughs> okay, well, we just, oh, maybe they're taking a big cut. I don't know. No, I think that so it's gotten a lot more convoluted. There's you can be um, a follower on Patreon for free now. You mm-hmm. can just like follow oh. a creator and see when they post. And you, as a creator, you can post free con- like public content, or you can post to people that are paying uh, or, or on certain tiers. So yeah, it's 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 definitely a little bit more. It's a little bit harder to see. What I think I think I make like twelve hundred dollars on Patreon a month. Okay, which, well that's a big difference from what yeah. we what it appeared that you were making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what's your take on like now? There's the YouTube membership, or you could do Patreon. Like people are swapping, people don't know they're doing both. What what's so, your experience there? I've never turned on the the YouTube uh, memberships. It just seemed like it. It seemed like it, I think it's good, and I probably should. It's just another thing to manage. Another thing. Mm-hmm. Right. But then isn't it more simple because you're all just on one platform and when you do Patreon, now you got a whole another website to deal with. You're you're yeah. about to move people to one thing to the other. Yeah, if I hadn't if I wasn't on Patreon before, I definitely would have done that, you know. But that didn't exist mm-hmm. previously. Only Patreon did. Um but yeah, Patreon I, I think like everything's cyclical, right? So there was a lot of excitement around the mountain bike community as it was building and growing. And you guys were a part of that. You guys were absolutely a part of that. Like you guys were, what do you guys, if, if I'm like first gen and you guys are like zero, we're like, uh, you guys are like I've gen zero. zero. Yeah. <laughs> the golden, what, what's the like war time generation? 
The greatest generation? Yeah, we're the greatest generation. <laughs> <laughs> they humble. Um, what was I saying? Patreon. Patreon. Oh, yeah. So we're I think old. a lot of it, um, just things have changed a lot. The Patreon is not as popular as it once was. At least mine isn't. I also don't push it as much. Um, I've been kind of like, just, I've been a lot more thoughtful about where and how much, uh, where the energy goes and how much I can handle because in the end it's just me, you know, I don't have some people, a lot of channels like have someone that manages their Patreon, you know, it's like, that's a whole job. And, um, at some point when my Patreon was doing really well, I had, you know, promoted it and, and I was putting a lot of work into it. I was doing, I had a lot of really great perks for people that were on there. I had, I was doing, I had like physical goods that were being made and, and sent out. And, um, um, and then because of that, it was, it was really popular. It just became so much. It became too much to keep track of it, like doing it from the road, the, the level of coordination, um, for produce, for making physical goods and then getting those together and packaged and sent to people at ad, like it just was too much. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I had to trim, like cut back on that. And, um, just as the excitement of the mountain bike space on YouTube has kind of dwindled, it's not, you know, all new and fresh anymore. I think so have a lot of things like Patreon for creators. It's yeah. I don't really know you guys, are you guys aware of any, any mountain bike creator doing really big, you know, exciting things on Patreon, like for membership exclusives, like Patreon or YouTube partners. I don't anymore. No, no, no. not more of not, not, you, not mountain biking at least. Yeah. Definitely I think it, other. I think it was really important. I mean, I know it was really important. I, I would have, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for Patreon. Um, and I think that, I think that the community, I think that viewers knew that. And I think that's the difference. Because I think that I think that now that people in the mountain bike world kind of have seen it long enough, you know, they see they see creators that they see it, that creators are doing well. I think that they don't. It, it doesn't. They. I don't think that there's the uh, like the feeling of the same feeling of support. Like I'm supporting. I am like making this possible by going to Patreon that there once was. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it's, and it is, it's different. It's hard know? to give extra value too. Like going back to channel five, they have a Patreon. They're absolutely killer. They probably make oh, yeah. tens of thousands of dollars. I don't know how much, probably insane. Probably Check it out. That, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll look it up. But, uh, but I mean, there's like obvious value there, right? It's like yeah. educational value. Mm -hmm. If you're really interested in a topic, go to Patreon and you're going to like really take it in with the mountain biking stuff. It's pretty hard to, I mean, it's hard to make our content too, like to do the physical work, to go oh, mountain biking and create the films and then create an extra thing. Yeah. I don't, you know, well, you're the one like, that carries around a red camera and a backpack out on trails. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why we <laughs> shut down our Patreon. <laughs> so what is, uh, Back what does channel five have? They got uh, $5 a month. Or ten dollars a month. Oh, they don't post publicly how many patrons uh, they have. Mm -hmm. I I'm always sure think that's interesting. How some some channels you can see how many patrons they have and some hide it. I think the default vault is on. It is. Yeah. Um, yep. So you gotta make that conscious choice. Why would they hide it? I don't mm -hmm. know. But it's clear that you have a lot of support and uh, you know tight knit community and people mm -hmm. love you. Uh, Six hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. That's dip, great. Dip below. Oh, oh, did, oh you I've lost subscribers. Oh. <laughs> I was. At well, go subscribe again if you're not subscribed. No, it's yeah. okay. That's it's okay. We'll, we'll punch People's you up. interests change. Yeah, you know? you're gonna experience the feeding off each other bump. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> just a tiny little bump. Uh, but yeah, the fans do love you, and we did post a story yesterday asking the fans to send in some questions. We don't do this on the pod mm -hmm. very no, often. No, not often. We Bad actually edit. we very often ask the fans to send in questions, and then we totally forget on the pod to even address <laughs> the questions. Fair. But we do have uh, a lot of questions here. How about we Ooh, just okay. quickly rapid fire? Oh, quickly rapid fire. Okay. Yeah, or else you know we're gonna be podding for four hours. Okay. All right. I'm uh, sorry. I still want to hear what Avenger I am out of the Avengers. Mm. Oh, Thor. You, whoa. Yeah, yeah, probably with the nice. hair. The hair. I mean, also or, the most Thor? powerful. Or you know Captain right. America kind of had longish hair and a beard. No, no, no. no. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Because we got to factor in BKXC and Seth in here as well. BKX, mm. Brian is Captain America. Brian's Captain thousand America. thousand percent. Has to be. Seth? Yeah, but who's Seth? The Hulk. 
Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. He's got to be. He's indestructible. He's indestructible. Have you seen the crashes that Seth takes? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Have you seen that guy? Yeah. He smashes through things. He's Hulk it's smash. It's ridiculous. Smashes through the earth. I've seen all you guys crash in his backyard. Jeez, you guys are all all taking big bails, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. Yesterday we were freaking out over the. He was showing us you crashing on each stunt in his backyard, oh, and then you know we haven't ridden anything yet because it rained. But right before we drop in, we're going to be watching you crash on his stunts, and then we have to follow that. So <laughs> I was going to give you guys beta if you wanted some. On, on the on the features yeah i mean we saw the clips of you riding them <laughs> do we want your beta at, at first you must fail before you can succeed no <laughs> we saw you go over the bars and land on your feet off the though. pucker pad yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. be fair though that was a good fail like you, you get it you that was i don't know what, i don't have no idea what, we, I, what happened there we it saw just, you break your rim casing the whale tail thing. I'm proud of that. <laughs> that was a funny <laughs> ending to that video, though. I'm proud of that. You know why? Because every other time in my mountain bike career, I would have been like, save the bike. And I would have broken myself. Mm, yeah. That time, I knew I had fucked up. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, you had a nice like, little. I'm, I'm staying on these pedals. <laughs> and I'm breaking this bike if I have to. But I am not getting hurt. And I did. That's good. And it was That's great. Good. And, and the bike was like mostly okay. Just broke a wheel. I was like, whatever. You can get a new wheel. <laughs> Imagine what happens to me if I bail there and in the back of that. Oh, God. Good things. That's all I could think about when we were checking it out yesterday. Okay. So. Yeah. So like, for instance, on that one, you need to focus on pumping the backside of the whale tail and that's it. If you, mm. if you do that, if you get onto the whale tail and like, so like the back of the whale's head, if you get on and pump the backside, you're going to make that fine. Although you guys now have this like wall ride in between, which is going to be a mind fuck. Yeah, it's a bit of a mind. I haven't hit it yeah. since that's gone up. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And you also almost hit the tree that's on your upper right. So. <laughs> Very into the weeds. Just pump the backside of the whale tail, Dave. Just got to do it. Just pump the backside. <laughs> yeah. And don't hit the tree that the, the limbs up to your right. Maybe have them trim them. Okay. Oh, we haven't even seen the mainframe yet either. I Where the heck is that? I guess it's on the other that's side. That's the one that you guys will probably be fine on. That's the hardest for everyone else because it's very North Shore esque. It's mm. I don't know. That's the one that's scared. I don't even know. So that one, you <laughs> just you just you actually need first of all tighten your stem bolts. <laughs> yeah, that's seriously. I'm yeah. not yeah, kidding. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, every, yeah. that's how I got hurt, and that's how um, our other buddy Dave got hurt. So it's like the most people. The most crashes have happened because your your bars turned on that. Because if you're going slow and you go up and over that, you put so much torque on your bars. And if those things are not tight, they're you're twisting, that's you're a, flying off that. That's a good tip because our tip. bikes just came out of a bike bag right. off the airplane. So yeah, yeah, that's really my best advice tip. for that is just go faster than you think. Yeah, that's I got that from watching you. Yep, it just smooths learn. it out and, and it works. Like it's weird, but it works. Yeah. What yeah, about these? Well, thanks for taking all the crashes for us. Yeah, I got you. And, and we'll uh, we'll dive into the beta after the pod. Good All luck right. with the uh, the cannon. I've I haven't done that. <laughs> Good luck. Is it? It's just a big tear totter. Uh -huh. What's the worst you Gavin? Well, he's gonna try to get you to jump off it instead of ride it like a teeter. So he just heads up. Yeah. So in the seventh grade, <laughs> at the end of seventh grade, going into high school, um, I jumped off the end of a teeter totter in Whistler, um, landed on my face, got a, the worst and only concussion I've ever had in my life, broke my front tooth, and got fourteen stitches in my lower lip. You've got a fake front tooth too? I've yeah. got two. Oh, really? Don't yeah, this good. one right here. Mm. Yeah. Wow, yours is amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. You too. <laughs> Do you have a fake tooth, Dave? No. Oh, I thought you had a hockey mm -hmm. fake tooth or something like that. Jay? I got two. One here. Both of them. Oh, no, two in the front. One, and then yeah. a molar. But, oh, fake molar. This yeah. is my second uh, version of this tooth, though. The first one was not good. It, I broke half of it. Same. I and had that too for a long time. I had like the gray tooth all through high school. And, and it would come off all the time, right? No, I mine would stuck and it never fell. Oh, wow. So yeah, that's mine, front mine tooth would come 0. off. What's that? Sorry, that's front tooth point oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, expensive repairs. Yes. Very expensive. $1,400 <sighs> a pop. Yeah. yeah did, you, did you get stitches in the mouth from your accident? Uh, No. No. Messed up my neck real good though. Oh. Yeah, I crashed on rock, it, just not knowing a line, like following someone that was kind of trying to show off. I think in front of me, instead of like making sure I knew the lines, someone I didn't know and I had just met, and we were riding the um, the ribbon in Fruta, okay. Colorado, 
and it's just like all rock. And we took this like gnarly alternate line. Now that I now that I know it, and now that I've been riding a lot longer, it's not nearly as gnarly. But I just went off. I went off. I went off a ledge like where you're not supposed to go. So clearly, terrible outcome. I just crushed myself. Jeez, yeah. were you filming? Yeah, it's on video. Oh, it's on video. Oh yeah, it's it's gnarly because the camera like comes off. It breaks, so I snapped the GoPro off of. I was wearing the gimbal. No, oh, I was gonna ask how's the so gimbal? So bad to crash, by the way. With. Yeah, it's a sternum breaker for oh sure. My gosh, but the camera falls perfectly, and it's like facing my foot, and my foot is like twitching. Oh, <laughs> it's so gnarly. <laughs> Seth and I, I have a video of us going back and doing it too, like a redemption video. Oh no way! Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty now. good. Yeah, I don't but the so. crash, the crash, like looks, it's painful, and Brian was. We were on a road trip with Brian, or Brian was about to fly in for a road trip. So, and the first thing I have, this is, this happens way too often with Brian and I, Brian flew in. And the first thing I had to be, I had to tell him was like, Hey man, I think I I need to go to the ER (laughs) because my neck was hurting so bad. I I was like afraid I'd mess myself up. Yeah. So he went to the ER with me, like right Uh after, right after I picked him up from the airport. Classic Captain America move. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you'd do it for you. All right, no more, uh, no more right, delaying sorry. these fan questions, sorry. guys. We got to rapid fire through these. Okay, will you get a new fan? No, I do not want to do another build. Screw that. Uh, I am Peruvian, and cool. should I say the names? Nah, screw the names. Yeah. I am Peruvian, and I wanted to thank him for showing the world our trails. Come visit us. I will. I'll be back next December, and thank you for all the amazing trails and for. Uh, being such amazing hosts and your guinea pigs <laughs> is yes. uh, is there a new van build coming up okay we've addressed nope. that no camping and biking recommendations in the u.s <laughs> way, really, way to narrow it down yeah. uh, on way. planet earth <laughs> <laughs> jesus i think colorado like for the combo for camping plus riding colorado is, <laughs> is best bet that's good most blm <laughs> land and yeah you easy say that access one? to riding no uh one bike to rule them all what travel and geo range same oh, same s- same user sent that in wait this guy sent in three questions he's hey now 160 160 160 yeah for for like the do it all bike how to handle progress and injury how to find the balance go slow and don't get talk don't get don't let your buddies talk you into anything you're not ready for trust yourself if you're if you feel scared when you're going to do something, you're not ready for it. So you don't succumb to peer pressure. I do not. Mm. And if someone pulls out a tube of toothpaste and they're your cousin. <laughs> this is a Bobo story. What was the question we asked Bobo? What do your parents not know? Oh, yeah. What, what's something that you did as a kid that your parents don't know about? He said him and his friend. Uh, his put, cousin. Him and his cousin put, <laughs> put, put toothpaste on their peckers. <laughs> 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 Wait, and then what <laughs> that was the story he just said it hurt like hell <laughs> uh, when will the hair be cut it's saying like it's a sure thing yeah why would you want that come on yeah I'm not gonna the hair the hair is the way it is not because I like long hair the hair is the way it is because I don't like going to get haircuts and this is it's either gonna be buzzed or or this just let let loose. Has anybody? I uh, love the hair. Hey. <laughs> How long were you waiting to hit that one? The whole episode. How many pre-hits? <laughs> How many things do you have there? Oh, dude, it's loaded. Oh my god! <laughs> and that's just one page. <laughs> you're fast on the. You're quick on the draw. I got uh, muscle got memory. I'm impressed. Up. Yeah, thank you. Um, you ever done like the you know like Snapchat or something like that, and you put it like different hair filters on your face to see yeah. what you would look like when? Oh my god! You know who loves doing that, Seth? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, I would, <laughs> I would. I get. I get just like r- just randomly. I'll get just like screen grabs of these. That's like doing it with himself, and they're hilarious. <laughs> Like him as a pirate, him as a thug, him as a bank <laughs> robber, like him as a cowboy. Like he'll just Hulk. he'll just send me screenshots. He's probably like taking a shit and just doing this on his phone and just like sends it off. That's funny. Now we know what his guilty pleasure is because he doesn't watch any YouTube mm-hmm. or uh, Netflix or TV shows. No, he does not. He's he says he listens busy. to podcasts in bed at night. He doesn't really listen to music. Really? Yeah. This one time when we were getting to know each other, we didn't really yet know each other that well. It was like early on. We were driving somewhere and um, I was like, I was, we were driving and it was his car. He was driving 
and it was like four hour drive or something or two hours in. Like something strange. What, like what's what's off here? I realized we've been sitting in silence for two hours. There's no music, nothing on the radio. But like it hadn't registered to me because Seth Seth was in the driver's seat, kind of just like he was writing a script in his head no and he was way. talking he was like mumbling it under his breath <laughs> said, but no music i was like what what is happening here i was like yo can we turn some music on bro <laughs> <laughs> and he just puts on uh kevin mcleod uh free common <laughs> license music it's the sound of a clock ticking <laughs> oh. <laughs> what what's the, what we're gonna ask what uh what's his soft spot like what's his, what's a key what's the key to Seth's heart? Like what is he? Well, now it's kids, for sure. Well, uh, sure. Mountain bike wise, but like, like I don't know. Personally. Maybe like you want to give food. him a gift it's or food. something. You want to make him like stoke. You show up at his house. You give him, you know, what olives you give or him sardines. A, olives or sardines. Oh. He what? will lose his mind for a good sardine. Wait, hold up. Yeah, a good sardine. Yeah, aren't they all the same? <laughs> okay, well let's go pick some olives and sardines. Some up. good um garlic stuffed olives. Okay. Oh. oh, I can get down with some garlic stuffed olives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some garlic stuffed olives with some like prosciutto or like pepperoni or like salami or something. Okay. And then some certain. Mm-hmm. So he, got, he likes a charcuterie or something like that. Snacks. That's, he just likes sna- the snack. Snacks. Yeah, we've had some. Yeah. During the van build, like, or just when I've lived with him for months at a time, some pretty epic late night snack sessions after editing. Awesome. Yeah, food, food's the way. Okay, well, we'll uh, pick up some olives and we'll eat them in silence. With also them. memes. Yeah. He's a big memer. Memes? What? Yeah, he, he's, he loves the Kex. I wonder if he likes our oh. memes, our mountain bike Pro- memes. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. I'm just kidding. Ours Come are good. On. Ours are premium. Your yeah. last meme you posted is 2.5 million <laughs> views now. And you tore the internet apart. Got e-bikers. The, got the e-bike rage going, which yeah. was People successful. People are passionate. All right, next question. Uh, how do you get so darn handsome? We all want to know this. I'd have to say that's my mom. Yeah. Handsome woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does she look similar oh, to you? <laughs> Lots of mountain bike crashes. It's all the surgery. Mm. I've had my nose. <laughs> I've had surgery on my nose like three times. Really? Just trying yeah. to get it right. Yeah. The, the Michael Jackson method. Right. As in, I'd love to breathe out of it. <laughs> yeah. <someday>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you and I got the, yeah. I got the same thing. I noticed you got a little bit of a crooked nose there. <laughs> yeah. I think I have it too. Been more crooked yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, your nostrils, you clap, your septum and your nostrils collapsing. It'd be great. I imagine how good of athletes we'd be if we could breathe out of our nose. It wouldn't be fair. I wish I had my uh, my uh, nasal dilator on me. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I got to show you this after. It's game changer. Wait, what? I got to show you. I want to go get up. i very get curious. It right now. Yeah, I got to show you the nasal dilator. Man. Dave will show you his anal dilator after. <laughs> I didn't do fucking shit. It's just Matt's fingers. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, you have four days in Brevard with your breeze. I think it means bros. What Big do you bros. ride? We actually wanted to know this too. Yeah. Because we, we haven't done any riding yet. So I know. That's why we were thinking Canuga. You got to do Canuga. Burn Park. Yeah, do yeah, Burn Backyard. Park. Definitely. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> you you got to go ride Pisgah. You're gonna, you can't come, you can't like stay in Brevard and not go to ride Pisgah. You should do a full black lap, full black mountain. It seems really long. It's big. With the tripod and it, we have to film everything. Yeah. The burden. Hmm. We can't, what's the most like visibly, what's the most pretty ride you guys could do that's not? Well, Seth was Russian saying, what's it, Black? Daniels Mountain? Ridge, he might tell you, is like a pretty accessible, easy loop. Oh, he never told us that. He told us Black Mountain. Pilot Rock, he said. He's yeah. Pilot's going to hurt. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sounds like Ollie's going to hurt. They're, yeah. Yeah. No, they are. Pisca is pretty brutal. You have to climb this trail called Laurel to get the pilot, and you'll hate your life. Cool. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, sweet. but pilot is very pretty. Pilot would be really cool to film. Yeah. Yeah. Also, black. Black is super pretty, and black is super fun. You can actually do, like, what everyone here does is they'll do, like, out in black. So you'll go. You can go, you can pedal up to the top or you can pedal up to the middle and then pedal up out and back the upper section. And that way you avoid doing this like big scenic hike a bike up and over. Mm, yeah, I think you should do the full thing if you're doing it for the first time. But yeah, you got like, you know, that looks heavy, man. It looks really <sighs> long. It's like, uh, it's over 10 kilometers. Yeah. 
I don't know what that is in freedom units, but it's gonna put down a lot of miles. Bennett, Bennett is a really good Bennett and Buckwheat. Bennett, you can get. I'll use it's a gravel it, road climb. So, and that's like the gnarliest trail. Really? Yeah. And what it, was Bobo saying was the gnarliest? He said Rock Creek. You're in there. He said it's the that's best. That's the bike park. Yeah, he said yeah. it's the best and it's the gnarliest. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like a I don't no. know if it's the yeah, gnarliest to be honest. Yeah. I mean, Nico, so Nico, the double black trail there is like it, Nico Malaley built it so that he could test downhill bikes. So it's mm-hmm. very, it is, it is very awkward. But it's only really gnarly if you're riding it crazy fast. If you ride it slow, which, you know, mortals would, most of us do uh, that are not Nico, it's not that bad. It's, it's not like got anything crazy. Like North Shore esque, where you're like, man, is this even like at all? <laughs> you know, it's got no boogeyman sections mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, Canuga's got some proper weird stuff. This trail called um, Force of Nature, pretty, it's pretty tough. Uh, and Paint It Black, also tough to go fast on. Some really good jumps mixed in. Too. What trail has got the big wall ride at Canuga? That's a new blue one. It's called Deadwood. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this if you guys go options. ride there, let me know. So many options. Yeah, yeah no, Canuga, I you definitely have to ride Canuga and you definitely like Burn Park, Chestnut Mountain is so fun. It's so sick. Like Burn Park is just the base of it, right? So that's where you get your warm up in. But the other there's now like four or five other trails up higher on Chestnut Mountain that Canton has been building and they're really good. So definitely, definitely go ride there. Too much to ride. All right, here's another question. How are you so wholesome? I'm wholesome? I would say so. When we, you yeah. participated in our uh, mountain bike creators oh, yeah, read, read mean comments mm-hmm. video, and uh, you might have been our favorite interview. Me? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Or, I don't know if it's an interview, but you were our favorite uh, submission. Submission. Oh, because uh Gee, thanks i don't know what was it it was just you were jolly about it you yeah. were you didn't get your feelings hurt yeah, you yeah, laughed yeah. at everything mm-hmm. uh and it made us feel like th- this will work out because some people were kind of like <laughs> fucked up over it seth we we crushed his soul a little bit <laughs> like, yeah. well, we felt it. bad after seth's submission <laughs> uh even cam mccall we felt a little bad he said yeah. oh what i want more i'm bummed yeah you you just you had a good spirit to you you spent enough time on the internet man yeah. yeah, you didn't take it seriously, which was was the move. I've had many years of being called a bum. Ask people asking me when mm-hmm. I'm going to cut my hair and get a job. You know, you got to have a little bit, a little bit of thick skin. I've I've read every every bad thing I can possibly. You do have a wholesome spirit, though. It's uh, infectious. I think that's why people are so drawn to you. Thanks. Mm-hmm. I I think that. I mean, obviously, I'm less wholesome in real life. <laughs> <laughs> than I am when I'm, you know. Don't meet your heroes. Then I'm, yeah, that's, I don't know. I'm, I'm different when I'm riding a bike. When I'm riding on my bike, I can't help but be happy. It's like, you can't meet me on the trail and I'm having a bad day. It's not possible. If I'm on the trail, I'm having a good day. So I think that's a big part of it. My videos that I'm filming, I'm out riding my bike almost, almost all the time. So how could I not be in a good mood, you know? Um, if I was making some other sort of content, I mean, you, I've worked finance at one point in my life. You meet, you meet me then I'm not wholesome. I'm not happy. Finance. Yeah. That was what, what uh, I went to school for. Really? Mm-hmm. What, uh, what, what, what were you doing in finance? I worked at a private investment banking firm. Really? Yeah. A small little outfit in Tampa, Florida. I went to school for finance and yeah, I was not wholesome, not happy. Oh, wow. So did you invest your $300? <laughs> Yeah, in some way. <laughs> Compound interest, man. That could be $3 million. Uh, it could. If I had started back then, if I had had any money. <laughs> you invest that gimbal. All right, next question. What happened to Canyon Bikes? Canyon Bikes. Um, just, I think the, the partnership run, ran its course. Yeah. I enjoy the bikes. I enjoy I really appreciated the opportunity greatly. I think, you know, I think I got them some really solid exposure and, uh, Eventually, I just felt like it was, it was during that time that I was kind of cutting back on my commitments. And, um, and that was one of them. We just parted ways amicably and said thanks. Yeah. Do you miss living out of your Mazda? No. Dude, sometimes. There's a lot I of think, Mazda comments here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand that. Sheila is her name, mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah, no, when I think back about the things that I've done, sometimes I wonder, I, I really don't know how I did it. 
because I lived out of that car. I tent camped every single day, every day. For how long? Like four years. Wow. <sighs> yeah. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Like, I really wow. don't, I genuinely don't know. I think I was that determined and that unwilling to go back to working my nine to five. I mean, you get into a routine and it just gets easier. You do get into a routine and like you get set up certain places and you stay there. Like I stayed in Salida for, you know, a whole summer. So like I stayed in the same spot for three months, but I'd still pack up the tent every night. You just, got, I got so dialed. I definitely got dialed. It was like not a big deal, but yeah, to once I, once I got into the van and had to like thinking back to living in the car where I had to find an actual spot to that I could legally put my tent up and not get bothered in the night. It's like, it, ugh, it was rough. I was also editing in Starbucks because I had no internet. And that's actually the biggest thing I think about. I was like, I don't, I just don't know how I, I don't know how I was that committed. I would spend 13 hours in Starbucks a day, like multiple days. Damn. Did they ever ask you to leave? No. Never. Yeah, and did you have to buy I stopped, something? I stopped buying stuff. I was so broke. You know, you, so you just go and you never buy anything. Because that's what I'm always concerned. I, I feel like I have to buy a cookie then. or something. I would buy stuff every now and then. It's Starbucks, dude. They're not, they they're care. not struggling, mm. you know? So like, it's not like I'm, I would go in. I'm not making a mess. I'm like being courteous. I don't know. I, I'd bought stuff every now and then, but I would be in there for so long. And um, so it's not like, I'm not going to like keep buying stuff. I couldn't afford to do that. Internet, internet was the fastest consistent internet anywhere. It's two, which was two megabytes a second, by the way. <laughs> What's your Starbucks order if you are buying something? Just coffee black. Yeah. Yeah. Cake pop? No. <laughs> and nobody got money for Who that. Who buys those? <laughs> a lot pops? of people. Yeah. A lot of people. Like toddlers? Like well, moms. They're delicious. Moms. Are they? Yeah. Right. I think I bought one in my life. It's just not substantial enough. No. no. I need no. the whole cake. You just got to try it one. I, I, I knew a friend who started a business making their own cake pops, though. You serious? Selling them to, like, weddings and birthdays and stuff like that. Smart. Yeah. So they were a cake pop star? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, so you're very, very positive, very wholesome. Uh, you loved camping. You did it for four years. What was the worst day tent camping, rooftop camping out of Sheila? No, yeah. Tent camping. Or, uh, sorry. I wish Roof, it was rooftop. Rooftop tent camping? No, no, no. Oh. Tent on the ground. Bro. Oh, tent on the ground. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Like, setting that shit up, putting the sleeping pad down, whole nine yards. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, yeah. Do dude. you, uh, like, do you, does it I, one night come oh, to Oh, yes. This one time, <laughs> this one day. It was in Wilson, Wyoming. And um, so, like, you know, when you live on the road by yourself, it, your, um, your social life is, like, totally up to you you don't have any circles that you're frequenting you're not going to work and seeing the same people you're not you, especially when you're going from place to place you know you don't get to know that many people you have to really make a conscious effort and if i don't make a conscious effort when i'm on the road i just don't i'm like sometimes i yeah anyway you, you, the longer you spend by yourself the weirder you get i don't know if you guys know this but it's true and sometimes if you're not careful you'll go a whole week without seeing someone and before you know it you're like wow i haven't even spoken out loud in five days so anyway sometimes you gotta sometimes you get lonely and you need to make an effort to meet to like social be social so you're you know don't forget to how, to how to be a person so in wilson wyoming i was having one such day or week and i'd just been riding a lot it was my first time in the tetons and i was loving it but i was like i need to like i need some human interaction so i went into this coffee shop and uh, I got my breakfast and coffee. I was like, this will, I'll meet someone. I'll, I'll strike up a conversation. And so I brought on the computer, was editing. I, I did. I met this, I, there was this guy, Joe. I think I'm pretty sure that was his name. He's like a ski instructor, big ski bum. And anyway, long story short, we partied really hard that night. <laughs> there's this, so there's this bar called the Stagecoach. Have you guys ever been to Teton Pass? No. Oh, it's so cool. So there's this bar called the Stagecoach. It's at the bottom of the pass. So there's this road up through the Tetons. It goes over to the other side into Idaho, into like towards Targhee Mountain Bike Park. But um, this town, this small town, Wilson, outside of, outside of that really well-known place. Uh, In Wyoming? Yeah. Uh, I'll Google it. Anyway. Jack anyway. Jackson Hole? Yeah, yeah Jackson Hole. 
Dave. Yeah, so it's like, wow. Good job, Dave. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Dave, like 15 Dave, minutes Dave. outside of that. And, Dave? and the way this this the biking works at this place is everyone just knows that people ride the Tetons. So and and it's like a really common through road. So bikers just line up. You just stand on the side of the road outside this bar and you hitch. You just put a thumb up and people passing by going up and out, over the pass, they just pick you up and take you up. And all the trails drop back in towards that. So you get a lift up, you do a run, you grab a beer at the stagecoach, and then you catch another ride. And um, so anyway, yeah, I, I met this dude. I went and rode that day. He's like, you know, let's go grab a drink at the stagecoach. We, he introduced me to the whole small town. We, you know, stayed up late in the night, went back to his place with his roommates, and he had, like, this arcade game in his house or whatever, like a, like a Tekken or Mortal Kombat type fighting game. Just continued to party just with the guys. And, yeah, I just I felt like so. I felt so shitty the next day. And I'll never do it again because being hung over in a tent, it was summer. Oh, oh. And, and so like, I, I'm not going to impose on these people. So I woke up and I felt like garbage, just so bad. Oh my God. I can't, I can never forget it. The driest mouth, right? Dude, the worst. <laughs> and I drove my ass back to this place, this camp, this place called Mosquito Creek, which also sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a Mosquito Creek in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And, and there was like a police incident there where a, a naked man was uh, holding DIY weapons and wielding them. Oh, oh, God. I don't know about that. Yeah. You forgot? Well, that was you? Is that what you're saying? Maybe oh, okay. Me, yeah. yeah. Anyways, go ahead. I mean, and long story short is I spent a whole day hung over in a tent with, you know, on a summer day and it was the worst thing ever. Uh, oh. Did you chunder in the tent? No, I did not. Oh, you kept it in. Yeah. But also I had no internet because this was, you know, I was broke and this was six years ago when things weren't so easily accessible. I was bored out of my mind just with nothing to take my mind, like feeling like garbage with nothing to take my mind. It was terrible. So bad. Oh, yeah. And there was other people like in the area camping and like totally. playing around like kids. Mm. And shit. I was like, oh, oh, kids when you're hung over oh, the no. worst, <laughs> just outside laughing. <laughs> yeah. So do you, do you ever have people, you know, approaching the tent or the van, knocking at it, you know, any weird once, intruders? Once I got the van, I did because it was such a public affair, you know, it was like such a big part of both my channel and Seth's channel. Right. And it, it was somehow people can just wreck Like I left it as blank as possible to be as anonymous as possible. I, it, but then I had this idea to put this motherfucking pipe underneath the van to store this outdoor carpet oh yeah. and everyone knows it's my van because they see this big pipe underneath right gotta get a sticker that says not the single track sampler <laughs> so then they That's know it's not you good idea. Yeah. i mean people you know everyone thought i should put some logos and like do some mm -hmm. sort of cool designs on the side it's like no i don't like i liked my anonymity i never really considered the what was about to happen you know, but like, but that was something that I enjoyed doing was going from town to town, being an anonymous just mm -hmm. mountain biker. It was great. So and, uh, you can't do that anymore. So like any like weird knocks in the middle. Oh yeah, of the yeah, night. yeah. People, yeah, people. You guys know how it is. I'm sure you guys know how it is. There's a disconnect between you know like social interactions in real life and social interactions on the internet, and. When you live in a van and when you live on the road, no space is your own. You are always in public space, accessible to everybody. So, you know, like you guys living in apartments or houses, like no one's going to come. Although people did come to Seth's house too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I had some, yeah, I don't know. Some people don't have social cues. What can I say? But yeah, I've had, I've had people come up to the van just whenever and just like knock on it until i come to the to the door it's Jeez. Like i'm in my i'm in i'm in the equivalent of my house like would you really do this to somebody what about knocks on the van and that aren't fans like uh i've only had that happen once actually believe mm. it or not and actually tw and it was twice in a row both in austin texas two nights in a row by like parking lot cops really yeah i was parked outside of a um a planet fitness one night like, this will be fine. I'm a member of Planet Fitness. 
how would they know I'm not in there working out? And I got, he still like came and kicked me out. And then I went to a Walmart the next night and I got kicked out of there too. Out of a Walmart? I thought that's like infamously the place. Oh no, they're cracking down big time. Really? Yeah, over COVID. I thought they welcome it. it. No, it's it's a corporate policy that it's up to the manager of the store. So each store is allowed to have their own policy and managers got fed up with it. I mean, people are ridiculous in Walmart parking lots. It's like insane. Like like, little towns like pop up in the parking lot. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we did it on a road trip one time, uh, me and some other friends, and yeah, we went in and used the washroom as if it was our, yeah. you know, personal washroom, yeah. brushing our teeth and shit. Yep. Uh, Looking around the aisles for something to do, you know, like yeah. just using the workout equipment, bouncing <laughs> balls and shit. Like, yeah, it's like our living room. Testing out the toothpaste. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it hurts. This yeah. this one night in a Walmart parking lot in Bellingham, I woke, I woke, got woken up. It was 2 a.m. And I got woken up to like dirt bikes peeling out and open my window and there's these just these guys with their like playing around with a dirt bike it's like they just bought it or something and they were testing it out so he's like doing burnouts i open i like peeled up the window and i looked and just just burnt rubber just smoke flying everywhere first of all there's like a ton of people trying to sleep this was not it was not just me it's like a whole city it's like one of those setups because it's bellingham washington right yeah and and these guys are just like they must have been drinking and, or something because they just didn't care they were being so loud and and I went back in the van and like filmed something for a second and then I opened it back up and and the guy they had attached a rope from the dirt bike to his RV and he was pulling him around the parking lot with his RV yeah I was like what is happening right now wait who is pulling who. The RV was pulling the bike. Oh, what the heck? I don't know. That sounds and, fun. And man, they, they like <laughs> dipped out of the Walmart and onto the main road. I don't know what they were thinking, dude. Bellingham's crazy. Yeah, Bellingham's wild. It is getting pretty wild in Bellingham. Yeah, it's 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 a whole different whole different ball game out there. Did you get through all the fan questions? Low key, the, the, all the good Walmart ones. is a Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel? That's the best spot to park. Oh. Also company well, not policy. For long. Really? Did they have to? Or it's up no, to the they have like specific RV parking. Like oh. it's labeled. You go to a certain area of the parking lot. Dang. It's good business. We have uh, RVs that take up parking spots outside of our office studio space, and uh, it kind of pisses me off. Well, yeah, because I'm like, I, 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 I gotta it. work. Yeah, that's not I gotta cool. park. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your peeve? <laughs> that's my peeve. You know what really grinds my I'm ears. like, yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those guys that I, I want to knock on the door and be like, get a job. <laughs> Uh, anyway, man, I guess the there is a bonus, a positive of people being able to recognize my van. I've gotten many a kind notes left, like at Trailheads. Yeah, that's awesome. Money, Jason's got even money sometimes. I money? I have had money left on my van by Ooh. subscribers. What, in like, like an envelope like, or just cash? Like coins and a piece of paper. A lace really? underwear. Yo, yo, <laughs> here, grab a beer after your ride or what like the dinner on me. Like, yeah, I've got awesome. Awesome subscribers. Yeah, that's a really good fan. That's that really, really cool fans. Yeah. Do you ever get female admirers? No. No? No. It's all just dudes. All dudes. No, that's not true. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. I have I have some pretty I have there are women. Very you know now how it you're is. Talking. Way fewer. But yeah. yeah. Well I, one of the earliest, like all, really kind gifts I remember was actually from um this fan Jessica who have who's come on a trip with me, like one of the guided trips mm. before from texas she's like way early when i was living out of the van she sent me this like whole coffee setup it was so sick it was like really a really really kind gesture and i still have like the case you sent it in and like i have the the like tin that you store the coffee in like still have this like six seven years later that's awesome well i think i said something in my video because i was like making cowboy coffee i was just i had a mug and I had my burner. I'd heat water up. I put it in there, and then I would put some coffee grounds in a in a um, filter, and I would just like twist it at the top, and I was just drop it in. That was the coffee. That was my coffee every day. You big coffee guy. I like coffee. Yeah, big coffee guy. You can't function without your coffee, or correct, cannot function. Mm. Dave's what? a no coffee guy. Dave no, has, has. I'm just raw dog in life. Yeah, <laughs> hasn't wow. had a coffee in years. You're wild. I didn't have a coffee until I started my first finance job working nine to five. That was the first coffee I ever had. Mm. Oh, wow. I tried. I really tried to raw dog life, and then, <laughs> well, and that's probably finance. That's probably not nine to five. That's probably like eight to eight or something. Yeah, yeah, it was eight actually. It definitely was eight. Oh. I remember I was waking up at five to go to the gym. Oh, 
And I was eating breakfast in my car. What a tough box. Oh, yeah. Terrible. So I did go through all the fan questions. Mm -hmm. I, I'm avoiding a question because I feel like oh, he's going to be like, again, this is, this, this is the question I get all the time. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me, can I guess what it is? Please. Yo, is Seth here? <laughs> <laughs> Number one question I ever get. Oh, that's funny. It doesn't matter where I am in the country. If, if someone meets me, they, they're like, yo, is Seth here? I'm like in Washington State or Colorado or California. I'm like, yo, man, no, he's back in North Carolina with his family, dude. That's funny. I used to get that a lot. It's, yo, where's Jason? Mm. Oh, I used yeah, to get totally. That a lot. Totally. It's been a while, though. Yeah, no one cares anymore. No. <laughs> Hands no, down. No, because you're, you're always together. No, now. I just get this annoying cash under, on my windshield. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it, yeah, we were actually talking about uh, notes. Jason said he's got some notes. Mm -hmm. I've got not notes. They oh. literally, because my truck is fairly unique not really at all actually but um yes, it they've, is. they've written within the dirt when it's all dirty they write big things. dicks uh i've gotten uh you are gay um <laughs> but like, that gotten, was me sorry yeah, i didn't know i've gotten like mahalo or like cool. like stoke it's cool but it scratches the fuck out of the truck yeah <laughs> yeah but the, it, you when can't do that don't do that you're people out there psa the yeah. yeah the oil on your fingers it may, it does something to the paint it sticks around and then the yeah little micro scratches from the dust it sticks around mm -hmm. when i was a kid <laughs> i wrote with my finger on the family arrow star daddy is a butthead and it <laughs> stayed for months and months and months maybe it never went away <laughs> And that's like, you know, that's, that's when I knew, okay, I should never write anything on a. Do you ever get Brooke to tell you that? Lesson learned. What? Daddy is a butthead. Uh, this is so dumb. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Just don't get it. It's after. <sighs> All right. What was the question? Yeah, well, I'm curious. What? Oh, the question. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what's the hair regimen? None. That's the whole point. Yeah. Everyone asks me. That. I knew yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I don't even put conditioner mm -hmm. in my hair. Like the whole idea is low maintenance because I don't want to. I used to have short hair and I have straight hair, mm. so it's boring, you know. So like, if you have short hair, it's just like it, it's like a porcupine on my head. No. So, so you're not even combing. You're not. I brush it once when I get out of the shower. That's it. Okay. What's well, regimen? Is it? <laughs> yeah. It's, well. It's like, uh, Bare minimum. No, oh, uh, it's, it's something. Like, it's like what's it's your toilet? Nothing. What's your toilet regimen? I wipe my butt. <laughs> I wipe. <laughs> yeah, no, it's Sometimes. the whole idea. I don't know. I don't brush my hair. I never brush my well, hair. Well, your hair is short. short. Well, I got no do regimen. You put, do you put product in it or anything? I used to. I don't. Know. I don't. It's such a pain, I right? Do. It's such a pain. It, I hate it. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to get out, and it's all waxy and it's gross. Terrible. And I got really fine hair. I have like puppy dog hair. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I, I used to people like in school. I people just used to pet me, and they say, and girls <laughs> girls would go up and say, "Oh my god, it's so soft." And then other girls would see, and they'd want to pet it too. I swear to God, there's a joke in there. Yeah, they would always What sound can I play? <laughs> they would always say, "It's like a puppy." Puppy dog hair. Puppy dog hair. That's your new nickname. Huh. That's your new when we started an episode. Matt, the puppy dog hair, Denison. <laughs> I'm I'm taking the hat off. Feel it. <laughs> it's gonna be nice. Just run your fingers it. through it. It just feels like hair, man. It's a bit wet. It's a bit wet. <laughs> it's not at its finest. I didn't I didn't do my regimen today. <laughs> he was too excited. It's a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be it was dry ten seconds ago, actually. Let me feel your hair. Let me feel your hair. No, oh, that's coarse as shit, dude. Come on. What the hell? Let me feel Jason's hair. He needs to hair. up his regimen. That's also coarse. Yeah, I got But he's got hair. product. You can tell he's got product. I got product. His, his hair looks good. Yeah, but it, it's too much to ask. I know. I, I ha my hair is thick. Mm -hmm. It's a thick bush. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, thick with two C's. So I have to do something. Yeah. But it's, yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. You have long hair, you don't. You don't I do used anything. to, and it was, it was terrible. It was bad. <laughs> I, I, when you start it, it's hot, but then you get used to it. And mm. yeah, I refuse to cut it because I don't want to go through the Justin Bieber phase when in, in the middle again. Exactly. That's the worst. Yeah, that's the worst. I refuse. Does anyone ever call you Mountain Bike Jesus? Oh, yeah. I get that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mountain Bike Jesus, Dave Grohl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what's that guy's name? Um, Jared Leto. Oh. 
Interesting. Anyone with long hair? And a yeah, beard? that's about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, Jared Leto's not there. That guy's the worst, though. Yo, he's a cult leader. Yeah, he's yeah. a weird dude. He's, he's a terrible person. Why? He seems like a bad person. Should we play a game? Yep. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, Alex, we have a game. Okay. Um, I like we'll games. Play, yeah, I'll play the, the rules here. It's that time again, folks. Time to play this or that. The game where you choose between two radically different options. Either this or that. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Question one. <laughs> no arms or no legs? No legs. Question two. Four feet tall or eight feet tall? Four. Pee a marble or poop a baseball? Poop baseball. Instagram or YouTube? YouTube. Teeth for nipples or nipples for teeth? Whoa, hold on. Wait, was that a fan question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> teeth. Teeth for nipples. Nice. Mm-hmm. E-bike oh. or acoustic? Acoustic. Lift access or pedaling? Pedal. Sunset or sunrise? Ah, uh, sunrise. Tacos or burritos? Tacos. Moab or Sedona? Sedona. Single track or listening to the whole album? <laughs> Single track. <laughs> Coffee or beer? Coffee. Busted shoulder or busted ankle? Mm, ankle. Pooping in the woods or pooping in a fast food woods. restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing beats... Wow. The woods poop are the best, man. Mm-hmm. Machu Picchu or Macho Pikachu? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going ma- Macho Pikachu. <laughs> Dick-sized nipples or nipple-sized dick? How big is the dick? <laughs> you wow. tell me. I mean, like, what's average? Wait, hold on. Say that again. Dick-sized nipples or nipple-sized dick? Dick-sized nipples. That'd be wild. <laughs> Imagine the spinning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the helicopters? Yeah. <laughs> chamois or no chamois? Chamois. Walmart parking lot or Costco parking lot? Walmart. I'm not oh, I'm not rich enough for the Costco. <laughs> Ponytail or man bun? Uh, Ponytail. East Coast or West Coast? West. Cry every time you poop or poop every time you cry? Poop every time you cry. Live free or ride hard or get stoked? Definitely get stoked. And that's the game. Hey. Oh, that was a this or that or that. Yeah, that was a triple entendre. Bending the rules a little bit. Yeah. Where did live free, ride hard, get stoked come from? What's the... I you just honest, said it once? I just... I don't know. I thought of it. I was like, I needed an idea. Like the framework of what I'm trying to do here, and that pretty much encompassed it. Yeah, I would actually. I remember the whole like I was. It was when I was learning how to edit. I was I had just gone on Final Cut, and uh, yeah, I like made a video, that like the channel banner or whatever video the channel the first things people would see when they come to my channel, and um, yeah, I just had the idea. Like, yeah, this is what, like, what is this about? This is about, I was, you know, I was doing all the YouTube research. I was like, you know, reading all the things and about how to start the channel and how you need to have like a very specific idea, like who's your audience and what is, what is this about? Like, how can people describe it in the shortest way possible? I was like, well, this doesn't Mm -hmm. like, you know, living free and riding hard and staying stoked. What does it mean to live free? I mean, that is definitely, that's, that's calls to the whole leaving my nine to five security and trajectory, like known trajectory in life and taking a risk and just knowing that that wasn't making me happy and having faith that I'd figure it out the other way and, and just taking that leap and not having no idea. Like I did a lot of things between that and being a full-time YouTuber. And it's, it wasn't always, it was never glamorous. It was not easy. Definitely not like, but it was all better than the 95. It was all better than where I was going to go in finance. I just had one day I was working and I was literally working in a cubicle, like walking past my boss's Maserati on my way into work for, for like a $29,000 salary or something out of, out of school, like, and working in a cubicle. You guys ever worked in an actual cubicle? No. It sucks. So, I was dude. at a, it was more of an open floor plan. It, well, it wasn't cubed in, but. It, That's how they get you. Fairly cubed. It's rough, man. You were a, kind of fairly cubed in at Rocky Mountain. Mm. It was kind of like yeah, open they, floor. Yeah, and that's a bike company. 
and yeah we did we had it was open floor but they had like dividers right there. yeah it was the closest thing to a cubicle like yeah. the, like the yeah. opening of the matrix you know and he's in the cubicle yeah that's what can't read yeah that's what i thought of it but yeah i mean that's that's the live free the live free the live free was like i don't care what everyone everyone thinks i don't care that i'm living out of my car and people are looking at me strange i'm gonna do what i want how i want and they fuck it to everything else you know Love it, man. So, yeah, what's next it. for you? What's next for the single track sampler? That's a good question. That's a really good question. I've been asking myself that a lot lately. Yeah, I don't really know. I th- actually, I do know. I think I, 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 for the last couple of years, I think I, I spent too much time thinking about that. And I lost sight of what I was actually being allowed to do. So, for now, the plan is to keep doing what I'm doing because it's awesome. I'm still just so thankful that I get to go ride my bike and be able to afford living doing that and doing it on my own time like i'm in command of my own time like a lot of times i put too much pressure on myself and i overcommit myself and it was just me and i end up stressing myself out and working i've never worked as much you guys i'm i know that you guys know this i've never worked as much as i have doing this as i have doing anything else um but yeah so like my, my goal is to just find a better balance and hope that I can keep doing this as long as I can because it's great. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Yeah, I feel like I've seen you kind of like come in and out of YouTube. You kind of, you, you appear, you re- disappear for a little bit. Yeah, I was, I, I was, I, I kind of, I, I'm a bad boss myself, mm. you know? It's hard when you're alone. You don't have the like social responsibility yeah. of your peers. There's yeah, no the fans, check. but mm-hmm. but they just want more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Fans don't have any concept of what's happening behind the scenes, and you know, I you just want to do better by them, right? So at one point, I was like, I'm gonna make. I got. I'm, I mean, I, I I really like making good videos. Making good videos is so hard, as you guys know, and making videos by yourself making good videos by yourself is even harder. And then trying to do that also while living on the road out of a van with no structure at all is like just impossible. And then also try to keep up the schedule. So basically, I mean, the only, I didn't, I'm not coming and going from YouTube. I'm just like burning myself out to the point where I can't turn a camera on myself and be like stoked or cohesive. Like, yeah, I was just like sending myself there repeatedly and therefore needing to like step back off youtube so that's now i'm i'm at a much better spot where i'm not putting the pressure on myself to do that i don't need to be the biggest youtuber i really don't care i have a really awesome core audience and i do well enough that i can you know pay for my insurance and pay for the van and afford food and whatever and that's enough and i'm not like putting that insane pressure on myself to, to do more and make it bigger, you know? So, yeah. Awesome. Any plans to come visit Canada again? I actually am coming to Canada in June. Oh, cool. Am, to BC. However, I'm flying in oh. and out. Uh, not, oh, yeah. Flying in and out? Flying in and out of Vancouver. We don't have an in and out burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing a, uh, a trip with Chasing Epic. Mountain Bike Adventure is going to do... I'm excited because I'm going to ride the trails in Whistler. So I'm going to okay. ride Whistler, mm. Squamish, Pemberton for five days with, uh, with a group of guys, film it, and uh, fly on back. Well, let us know. I mean, we're, we're here. We can, we can be around. In Vancouver? Yeah. Yeah, that's where you guys live, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I we know. can go was... to the Squamish and Whistler and Pemberton and wherever. Yeah, we can oh. crash the shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking about that actually. I was thinking about I was like, man, maybe like a couple days on either side of this, get out for some rides. We uh, got an office you can sleep at. You got an eye. I, I can park. RVs. Yeah, there's I some can RVs just park in the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I man, I um I both want to ride the North Shore again, but I'm also horrified. Right. We saw you ride uh uh, salvation the skinnies dude <laughs> that's yeah. we can we can pass all of that stuff yeah and show you the real stuff yo someone at the end of that ride this guy who watches my channel was in the lot and chatting me up and telling me about how this is nothing 
was yeah. like, I like just got off and I'm still like on edge <laughs> it, and like just so <laughs> stoked that I'm down and I didn't get injured. And this guy's like, oh, that ain't shit. Yeah. I used to ride those trails when I was like, you know, 12. The, the North Shore. Yeah, like Salvation, like the skinnies and shit. I was riding on a hardtail and on my Dude, P3. It's crazy what you can get used to yeah. if you don't know any different. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like people in Moab, you know, kids in like on the West Slope of Colorado, it's just like rock rolls are nothing to them. It's this is it. This is what you do. This is what you ride. Mm-hmm. For you guys riding on a plank of wood that's five inches wide, it's like whatever. That's our ride. Yeah. So that's why we have some confidence going into Seth's yard, but uh, seeing all the, you know, the bales <laughs> different. It's like, <laughs> and just me, an, man. The anticipation of like talking about everything so in depth. And then it's like, all right, ride it on camera first, first for the first time. It's uh, yeah. a little more nerve wracking. Well, imagine that, man, when I stayed at, when I was at his place, anytime you got to go film anything, you get no warm up. You literally, you walk out of the house because it's right there. It's at the house. You walk out of the house, you put on your helmet and shoes. And you you just drop in for the shot. It's like that. That's how a lot of that stuff happens. Mm-hmm. That's like going from the computer editing to on your bike because you need another shot. <laughs> and it's like, what do you think is gonna happen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm not ready to do this. There's nothing easy to ride at his place. Now there's a pump track, which I had been begging him to put in for years. But now you know, well, he said he, it's kids only. He had a child, and <laughs> I wrote it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, now there's like a way to actually kind of like get on your bike and move your body a little before just like sending gaps and yeah. getting broken off. I just remembered I was in Duncan on Vancouver Island. Have you been? Uh, no, Island? I want to go to Vancouver Island. Oh, yeah. man. I see so much. I, I mean, I see a lot from you guys, a lot from uh, Mark Matthews, mm-hmm. I think. That's where he mm-hmm. rides. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and uh, it, it, my, my dad sees uh, a man, uh, long hair and a van and says, I think that's single track sampler. <laughs> I said, no, no, he's not here. And I think, well, actually, maybe. So I do a U- U-turn and I have like reflective uh, glasses on so he can't see my eyes and I'm just totally looking at him trying to gauge. I'm like, no, just another dude with long hair in a van. If I was Not single track. If I was smart, I would have made some sort of like Instagram page or something for potential sightings, like sample yeah. sightings, you know, Ooh. like long, long time ago. That's, That's fun. fun. That would have been hilarious. Like, where is he? But then that also would have been counterproductive to the anonymity, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. People would be looking for me like really intently. Oh yeah, to try and find you. Oh yeah, yeah. don't do that. But. Yeah. Well, well, that's a that pod, fun? guys. We made it to the end. Hey, thank you so much, Alex. That was fun. My pleasure. That was that was fun. It's great to see you again and meet you guys. You mm. asked us why do we do the podcast? Well, it was a pretty good time. Hey, we got it, to, is, it is fun. We got to hear your uh, you know story for, told for the first time, at the beginning of the pod. That yeah. uh, you know, it was an easy format to get it out. We didn't it's, have to make a whole true. goddamn video over it. That's true. It's just out there now. That I, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. And people can listen. They don't have to watch. They could be doing things, being productive while they mm-hmm. listen, right? Who edits these? AI. AI. <laughs> AI and J-I. Jason. J I. Yeah. So that's really a good deal for you. What was the, what was, <laughs> what was the uh the program called? Software? Wait, does it work well? Autopod? Autopod. It works well. Uh it it absolutely works really well wow yeah there's maybe like a couple moments that are you're like less than ideal but in an hour and 40 minutes or whatever That's amazing it's like so only do adobe yeah it's sw- it's so. so it switches wow. the cameras wow. it switches the cameras for no you. way yeah. but you have to sync it first you have to put it on the yeah that's not that hard though no obviously yeah yeah you sync you it clap. and then you i clap oh you did clap okay yeah, did. thank god yeah Whew. yeah but yeah man that's good. rad good. that's really cool anything else to say to the people out there in uh feeding off each other land the chuthers they're hungry for more i mean man i would do a whole podcast where i just ask you guys questions personally but yeah to these guys i guess just thanks for watching thanks for having me to you guys also whoever said that i'm wholesome and 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 uh like a just wholesome nice guy to watch i appreciate well we all think that maybe we're not saying it but we all think that definitely (laughs) All right, that's it. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember, uh, if you are a XL, if you're a large person out there and you want to rep some uh, feeding off each other merch, go to mahalomydude.com and use our code BIGBONED for 20% off <laughs> XL shirts if there's any remaining. Wait, I don't what, know. what was that? I'm sorry. It's BIGBONED. With a D at the With end. With a D at the end, not, not an R. A big and, That's a different code. And yeah, <laughs> that's upcoming merch. Anyways, thanks for listening. Subscribe, lose a review, and call in speakpipe.com slash feeding off each other. Leave us a voicemail. Alex, you should call in sometime. 
speakpipe.com slash fitting up each other. Possibility. I'm going to do that. Yeah, please. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's it. You can ask the questions I'm that you didn't get to ask. Guys, yeah. Right. Yeah, you can troll yeah. us. I'm for sure. ask about that anal relaxer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to show you the nasal, nasal dilator <laughs> relaxer. <laughs> that's a different pill. That's anal a different relax. promo code. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you metaphorically full, well fed on the feeding I off am. each other pod? I am. Yes. yes we yes. totally fed off each Very other satisfied. today, boys. Mm-hmm. Totally mm-hmm. fed. All right. That's it. And as always. Oh no 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 Thank you for listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Please subscribe for more great podcasts. <laughs>